The Subaru Telescope, mounted atop Mauna Kea in Hawaii, captured this bizarre flying spiral in January 2023. So this is a phenomenon that's actually been seen around the world a number of times. One of the most famous incidents was in December 2009, when a Russian missile test made one of these spirals, and it was seen widely over uh, Eastern Asia. And what's happening is you see what looks like a perfect spiral in the sky. And, and that's very weird to people, because that sort of perfect geometry isn't normal when things happen in our atmosphere or on the Earth. But out in space, there's no weather that messes up the perfection of the geometry. And so what, what's really happening is that this rocket is firing its rocket engine and, and hot gas is coming out the back, but the rocket is spinning. And so because it's spinning, uh, you've essentially got a real life garden sprinkler in space uh, on an enormous scale. And sure, the spider in the sky looks pretty awesome. But what impact does it have on Earth and its atmosphere? And how do we ensure sustainability in a rapidly growing industry where many rockets rely on fossil fuels to fly? The pollution is being produced during the, the launch phase. And in that process, the rockets are injecting pollutants into all of these layers in the atmosphere. And within these layers in the atmosphere, there's chemicals from these rockets that can deplete ozone in the ozone layer that's protecting us from harmful UV radiation. But many of these rockets also produce black carbon or soot particles. These are uh, black carbon particles that we see in the kinds of industries and power generation and vehicles that we use. And we estimated that the, the largest impact or the largest concern for us is really these soot particles. And these soot particles are very, very good at absorbing the sun's rays and warming the atmosphere because they stay in the atmosphere for more than two years. So the longer they're in the atmosphere, the bigger their effect. And the reason why they stay in the atmosphere for so long is that up there, they can't be washed out. Although the amount of black carbon emitted from industries on Earth is much larger, here, rain helps wash some of it out. Up there, there is no rain, so the soot particles can stick around for quite some time. And then there's also space junk. We're looking at how do you stop spaceships bashing into one another? Because there's so many of them out there. There are no lanes. It's like people driving, you know, 100 miles an hour down the highway in all random directions in three dimensions. There's also issues with uh, hardware re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and big things coming down and, and, and maybe uh, causing damage to property when they when they land and smaller things melting in the upper atmosphere as they re-enter. And that's actually starting to be a significant chemical input into the chemistry of the upper atmosphere. Because the temperatures of uh, the space junk burning up through the atmosphere are so high, this produces nitrogen oxides or NOx, these reactive compounds that also contribute to ozone depletion. A couple of years ago, Mashabo spoke to Eloise about the environmental cost of space tourism. Back then, we concluded that at the moment, air travel is a far bigger problem because of the sheer number of flights taking off daily in comparison to space rocket launches. Since then though, the space race has been gaining real momentum. An important thing to understand is that space nowadays is completely dominated by commercial activity, right? Science is only a tiny part of it. And it gets complicated because there are many, many different startup companies uh, involved. There are lo loads of different players in many countries around the world. This is our biggest concern as environmental scientists because we don't really know how big the space sector is going to be. It could become really large and in that time contribute to depleting the ozone layer and also altering Earth's climate. Uh, and so we don't really have a good solution for this. We don't have perfectly clean fuel. I think if the space sector grows as much as we're anticipating it's growing, it should be part of discussions like uh, COP. And in terms of having discussions about this, there are certainly academics uh, who are working on environmental sciences and also uh, on astronomy who are starting to put together uh, groups to look into ways that we could regulate the space sector while also benefiting from it. There has to be a serious discussion around what are the most important 
uses of space. Should billionaires really be <laughs> traveling up and down and contributing to pollution? Uh, we definitely benefit from satellites that are in space. They, they give us information about global positioning, uh, weather forecasting. I use satellite observations in my own research to help me understand air pollution, uh, as do researchers who are studying climate change. So there are so many benefits of um, making use of space, but I think there are certain aspects of the space sector that perhaps if we're going to continue to impact the atmosphere by launching rockets, we need to have a serious discussion on what we should prioritize the use of space for.